All right, now that we've talked about what a polynomial function actually is, um, when we determine that we have a polynomial function, there are some things that we can do with them. And from, from now, we're going to be focusing on real zeros. Now, we've talked about real zeros before. We just called them something different. We call them x-intercepts. An x-intercept is where a graph crosses the x-axis. That's technically called a zero of the function. The y value is zero. That's why. Now, it doesn't matter how they um, present it. X-intercepts, zeros, roots, even solutions to the equation, they all really mean the exact same thing. So once we have that in mind, it doesn't matter if they're asking us for a zero or an x-intercept or a root. If you'll remember, what do we know about all x-intercepts? Well, every single one of them has a y value of zero. So we're really looking for a point. We're looking for the x-intercept. Okay, in order for us to figure out how to go about doing this, let's go back and review how we solved equations. If, if you were told to find the solution to this equation, because this is quadratic, we should automatically be thinking about factoring. Anytime we talk, we talk about quadratics, then hopefully we can factor and solve. So let's see, let's break up the x squared into x times x. And the only factors of 5 are 1 and 5. Um, in order for it to be a negative, they have to be opposite in sign. And we want it to be a positive 4, which means we have to be talking about a positive 5 and a negative 1. Now, once we have um, factored it, now we can take each one of those factors and set them equal to 0. Remember, this was called the zero product property. And then we can solve each little mini equation. So we have an x intercept, which is really what we're finding here. The solution to this equation is the same thing as if we had had f of x equals x squared plus 4x minus 5. If we were looking for the x-intercept here, then we would replace the y with 0 and solve. That's why solutions to the equation and x-intercepts are virtually the exact same thing. So if we were to graph this, then we would see um, an, a, a function, a, a picture, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that cross the x-axis at 1 and it crosses at, oh, I'm sorry, negative 5. So sorry about that. it would be over here, 2, 3, 4, 5. Got a little ahead of myself there. Now, because this is a positive a value, we know that it goes up, so it would do something like this. All right, now if we can go from a function to the x-intercepts, we should be able to go backwards and form the polynomial. So if we were given a function, uh, um, two x-intercepts or zeros, if we said x is 1 and x equals negative 5, find the polynomial that goes with that. Then we would say, okay, well, we're just going to go backwards. We're going to move this 1 over, so that would be x minus 1 equals 0, and x plus 5 equals 0. And then again, going backwards, if this is equal to 0 and this is equal to 0, then when I multiply them together, that would also have to be equal to 0. And then we could multiply our, poly our binomials together. So that would be x squared uh, plus 5x minus 4x would be plus 4x and then minus 5 equals 0. Now it only equals 0 if we're looking for the y-intercept. So this is technically a y-value which we can write as a function as f of x instead. So our function would be x squared plus 4x minus 5. If you can find intercepts, you should be able to go backwards and build the polynomial from those.